giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archived FIRST Robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Hey everybody, and welcome to Roast and Robots. This is First Updates Now interview show where we get to take a step back, relax with some amazing people in the community over a delicious beverage and our favorite mugs. I'm your host, Christina Tia from Wordplay All Day and FRC Team 125, The Neutrons. And our producer for tonight's show is the amazing Nick Olson. So we're right in the middle of competition season and with it brought along some interesting topics and people in the FRC community to have a roundtable discussion. So let's get to meeting our guest. So from team 1323 Madtown Robotics and West Coast Products, um, coming off of a dominating win at the Central Valley Regional, it is the one and only RC. So welcome, RC. Hey, guys. How's it going? Glad to have you on. And from the Ontario District, we have a recap host and mentor on FRC team 5036, the Robo Devils. We have Soy Hey, everyone. How's it going? Thanks for being on our show. And rounding out our guest pool tonight, we have another great region recap host and FRC team 6334 Illuminati alumni. We have Griffin. So welcome, Griffin. Hello. All right. So tonight's topic is going to be pretty awesome. But if you're watching live, we do have multiple giveaways tonight. So let's talk about it. We have a sweet t-shirt from our friends, FRC team 829 Digital Goats, who just competed at the Indiana St. Joseph event and were semifinalists. So if you or if your team is interested in giving away apparel on air, contact Tyler in the Discord. Everybody loves to give away sweet swag. So also from the amazing company Analog Devices, they're bringing to the table this uh, ADIS 16470, which means nothing to me, but probably a lot to the rest of you. Next generation eye sensor IMU board. Um, this module is designed to be a lower cost, robust IMU for applications such as drone stability feedback and precise navigation for smart um, I can't even pronounce that word right now, or even your robot. So <laughs> don't forget that you need to update your Rio to the latest version to use any analog device boards and make sure that you visit analog.com backslash first for user guides and to also check out their gyro board. So we'll be doing the drawing for these giveaways later on in the show, but um, if you would like to have a chance at winning, listen up. Um, we're going to have a keyword that you'll need to type in later on. And to enter, you'll also need to be following the channel. So click that little follow button to stay up to date on first updates now shows. Um, and if you would like to have five times the luck to win and to help support fun, please click the subscribe button. So you may even have a uh, free subscri subscription through Amazon Prime link through Twitch. And don't forget that if you have any questions or comments that you would like to read us to read on air, please tag at first updates now in chat and we will do our best to get to them later in the show. So with that, um, let's get to it. So topic number one, um, it's always a pretty hot topic this time of year, every year, and it seems to pop up on Chief Delphi. So we're two weeks into competition season, which is pretty insane, and teams are starting to hit their stride or get ready for their first event, which leads to some great saucy Chief Delphi threads and the wide range of opinions that come with them. So let's get into it. Um, we've all seen that one team at one point or another and wondered, how did they do it? Um, but once that thought comes to your mind, there's definitely a fork in the road that you can hit. Is it student built, mentor built, or perhaps some other avenue? So for you guys, when did you first experience an interaction with somebody or watched an interaction, you know, between some people where somebody deemed a team mentor built or student built? And were you a mentor or a student when that happened? So it would have been 2014 for me, actually, in our rookie year. Um, so when we showed up to a competition, it was actually us. Uh, we were shocked to see, hey, mentors can actually build the robots. We were under the impression that, hey, you know, it's just the students. And I think it's uh, part of uh, that thread that's been on Chief Delphi. I think it was just started yesterday or the other day, um, where there's not enough promotion from first showing that this is a mentor-based program. That's 
my opinion on it. But instead, teams are just sort of showing up at their first event and being like, oh, these guys are cheating because they have mentors touching the robot. It's a mentor-led program, and it's not really marketed super clear. So at our first event, we just saw people, mentors touching robots, and like, hey, what's going on over there? Felt like they're cheating. Oh, man. So were you a student when that happened? Yeah, I was a student. I was a grade 10 back then. Okay. <laughs> I think and for me, it was 2007 champs. I saw the poofs. And I was like, damn, this thing's totally badass. Like, why don't we have this? So I was in the opposite boat. I was like, dude, why don't we have cool adults? So <laughs> but we got our butt kicked. I think we went 0-10 and, and then poofs won the division or close to winning the division. But we saw the same thing. And they were all just looked like clean, well done. And it didn't suck like ours. <laughs> Oh, man. And Griffin, what about you? Uh, I would say that it was 2017 for me at um, a district event. And what happened for me was that there was a team next to us in our pit in the pits. And like sort of the, the number one seed of the event came up and asked them, oh, we want to be in alliance with you. Uh, but the thing is, we want we want our drivers to drive your robot. And the thing is, that wasn't the kids asking. That was the mentor asking. And we and we were like, what? And we talked to the team that got asked that afterwards, and they were like, stupid mentor-built team, like thinking they owned the entire place. Mm -hmm. So I, f I feel like it was a little bit credited, like, given that they sh could have felt like that, but mm -hmm. the mentor-built tag definitely was a little off. Because like, I know some of the kids on their team, and they're really good and really involved in that team. Yeah. Um, I know for me, it was like, I, you know, I was on a team in high school that you know, our mentors were awesome and they really supported us. But I feel like back in that day, which for me was like early 2000s, kind of like RC, like around 2007, like I don't feel like the the like stigma that's attached to like mentor or student built was nearly as prominent as it is now. Um, and I think a big part of that is, you know, people being super active on Chief Delphi shows like this, um, Slack, Discord, all that stuff. So I think it's really kind of ramped up in the last few years. Um, you know, now that we're kind of in this age of, there's constant communication. There's, you know, instant access to seeing what other teams are up to, like via Snapchat and stuff. Um, I think there is definitely an easier way to kind of get get an opinion based on all of that kind of coming together. So um, have any of you kind of participated? Griffin, it sounds like you kind of are in this boat like a, or even so hey too, like a proudly student built only team. Like, do you think that your team was like really adamant about like, displaying that well to be fair like our team started out of a fall of another team and like we had no resources like the first day of the meeting on the new team we were like we looked at an empty floor of our garage and said that's what we got like absolutely <laughs> nothing like but the thing is we sort of prided ourselves on the fact that we were able to scrap ourselves together and get and get stuff done like, we won district championships our rookie year. So I feel like it's not necessarily a bad stigma to be student-built, quote-unquote, but it's a question of, like, who makes the decisions, is my opinion, of whether a mentor-built or a student-built team mm -hmm. differs. Yeah, so for us, um, like I said, in 2014, we went in not knowing too much about the program. And... <clears throat> We didn't really talk to many other teams going into our first event, and consequently, we did pretty poor. I think we were probably second last or probably dead last at our first regional, right? Um, and then we start talking to other teams, um, trying to see how they run things and, you know, how their team structure is. And we're like, hey, this is what teams are doing, which is having mentors work with their students to build high-quality robots, and this is what works. And for our team, we want to emulate that success. So that's the path that we went down. So we're always of the point that you can sort of run your team however you like, but it's always nice. And I, I almost like my personal opinion is if you're not having mentors involved teaching the kids, you're doing your kids a bit of an injustice because this program is advertised on, um, you know, uh, students working with leading industry mentors to learn. Yeah, definitely. And I think RC, like, I, I feel like you could really touch on this. Like you are obviously like a, you know, industry specific kind of person bringing a really unique kind of perspective to your students. Like, how do you feel about kind of that idea? Well, I tell my students all the time, like I'm, I'm hugely about winning, right? 
and, and I tell them, like, I have smart kids. I have kids that are not so smart. And the thing with them is I tell them, I go, when we were students, we sucked, right? I hated going to an event and getting my butt kicked, right? And there was never an option for me to go, hey, RC senior, can you help me out real quick? So what my students have learned is, like, they initially hate the idea of, like, us helping them because they're like, man, my idea is not heard, whatever, whatever. And I kind of just break it down to them. I go, hey, at the end of the day, we're all winning, right? If we go out there and win a banner, who gets the trophies? We all get the trophies. It's a team sport like anything else. And you're not going to learn. And I think my next analogy is he's like Master Chef, right? You don't look at Gordon Ramsay and go, oh, well, yeah, screw that guy, whatever, right? You want to learn from the best. And I tell him, I go, no offense, I'm probably one of the better mentors out there. If you bug me every day that I'm here, I'm going to teach you something. And you're going to get better and better and better. And then I have some kids who have poor attitude that don't learn anything. And then I have some kids who are like, RC, please yell at me. RC, please get on my case. Don't let me be lazy. Because the problem is, like, no offense, my kids are lazy, right? And then I have some really amazing kids, but they work their butts off. And in order to do it, they need somebody pushing them. So I push mm. them every day they're in the shop. So I feel like with the mentor built thing, it's like the mentors really help because they're at a higher standard. With the kids, they don't know any better. So since they don't know any better, they just fall into whatever routine they have. So I think yeah. that's where I'll kind of leave it on my end. Oh, that's like, a, that's a clutch way to talk about it. Especially like as somebody that teaches kids all the time, like there's right. a, an accountability factor that is definitely lacking intuitively. So when they, when they get it from somebody who's successful or that they see like has a skill set that they, they want, or they are like curious how you got it. Like that's so much more powerful than, you know, just pretty much anything else. Like they're not going to learn that in school. Um, Right. And it's a lot of yeah. attitude, too, because we get kids all the day. Because, like, we have a – our school has, like, 95% free lunches. So the kids don't see the benefit of education sometimes. They don't put the effort in. And they don't know any better, right? Nobody shows them, like, hey, you got to come out every day, work your butt off. And I tell them about the Tom Brady season. I'm like, you may or may not like Tom Brady, but the dude works on his game every day, right? He watches film. Mm -hmm. He takes notes. He does the small things, right? And I tell the kids every day, I go, if you don't do the small things – how are you expecting to win, right? We're playing against the Poofs, these other guys, and we're good friends with them, but we got to put in work every single day. Don't take days off, et cetera. But the problem is the other kids don't push each other like that. So they need somebody in their life, and you know, I do that role, the other mentors do that role, and a lot of our team, the students do do a lot of the work, but if we don't have the mentors, we probably wouldn't be as good. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you know, in the chat and in other places, I've just seen this analogy of like, you know, people don't show up to school and, you know, students don't show up to school without teachers. You know, you can't just chuck a book at a kid and be like, here, go learn. And then like, you know, go do it on your own or, you know, with a, any other sport. I mean, whether or not people agree that, you know, first is a sport, it's definitely a team activity. You can't just expect a group of kids to show up and especially with like power tools and stuff. Personally, I wouldn't want, you know, like you said, RC, like I've got some really great kids, some, you know, really lazy kids and, and you know, kids in between that want to learn, but I never just throw them power tools or anything like that and be like, here you go. Here's like thousands of dollars worth of stuff. Go smash it together into a robot. So, yeah, um, yeah that's, so, very, I, oh, no, go ahead. that's very similar to my team. Like uh, we the mentors are there to like the students are making decisions and they're like, OK, we want this on the robot. Then we they go to the mentors. OK, how do I? How do I do this? How do I do that? What's the best way to do this? That's mm -hmm. what they what we feel like the mentors are for. Yeah. And I think so we have three district kind of viewpoints here between myself, Griffin, and Sohead. And then we have RC who's obviously in the regional model. But I think there's gotta be some sort of varying um just like culture around that where, you know, in districts you see I think a, a wide variety of teams as well as in the regional model, but I think in districts, like the teams are so kind of like intimately close together because you see each other at least, you know, twice a year or something. And I think the the stigma that people kind of put on a team is lasting a bit longer because of that, whether or not, you know, it's student bill or mentor bill. And like, how do you guys feel within your region? Like this student versus mentor bill is being viewed or, you know, how are people kind of throwing a label on different teams? Uh, I feel like for my region or my district, it's more or less like the t teams that do really good, but are, are considered really good. But where it goes into the mentor build, it's where you start seeing a little bit more disconnect from of the students with being interactive with other teams. Like, because 
uh, there's like uh, there's teams in our area that are like that have like really amazing robots and had a lot of involvement from the mentors, but they also have a lot of social skills and get really involved with other teams, like with talking to other teams about strategy, talking with other teams about just personal stuff and get making friends. But oftentimes, if it ter- if the team is good but detached socially in these competitions, then that tends to turn towards they tend to turn towards more the stigma of mentor belt. Yeah, so for Ontario, um, I think just being from Canada altogether, we've always sort of been tight knit, uh, even before districts uh, came here in 2017. But there's some teams that still will and probably till the end of time will have that attitude uh, of, oh, they're mentor built, they're cheating, um, and they'll never make district champ. So, you know, you'll have teams like that. But you also have teams that, you know, understand that, you know, it's, a mentor help program and mentors are key in this program. And there's teams that are willing to learn from other teams. Um, And then you'll still have your outliers that will always be like, oh, mentor built, we're only going to have our students touch the robot, which is fine. You can run your team however you want. Um, Most people, though, just feel mentor involvement in some level of whatever you decide is key to do well. Uh, Maybe not district person, but I mean, I don't know. I don't really see it much. I mean, most of the time, when someone talks to me, they want some they want some help or something. So I'm just kind of like chilling or doing nothing or sleeping. So most of the time, I'm relaxing to be honest. Uh, I think my kids get the most. I think they get they hear like knockoff poofs or something. And I told my kids all the time, I go like, if you're in comments like that, you gotta love it because like the more hate, the better, you know. Screw it. So um, I'm in the opposite boat, but uh, I don't know. We don't. I don't really see it. I think the poofs get it the most, maybe. Um, I don't know. I don't know if citrus gets it at all, but we get it a little bit, but. Most of the time, I, mean, I don't really see it as much because a lot of us California people know each other now. So it's not like North Cal plays with North Cal all the time and SoCal plays with SoCal. So I don't know the dynamic in SoCal, but North Cal is pretty relaxed. Um, I don't really have much to add, I guess. <laughs> California is just chilling. It's fine. Yeah, I'm just chilling. Just no heat there. Yeah. <laughs> so one thing that I've like I find pretty interesting with what you just said is like people will come and ask you for help is something that we've seen in our own district like the neutrons host a lot of uh like workshops before kickoff you know at kickoff and then like shortly after um and we see the same kind of pool of teams come in but we get this you know set of teams that during the competition season will be like oh man like how'd you guys do that you know even with like award stuff and it's like well come to our, you know, workshops and stuff. And we'll literally sit one-on-one with you or like set up a Skype call with us. And I think that there's some like weird uh, apprehension to like trying to investigate more. And that's like one thing that I try to push, you know, my own students and other students to do is like ask questions instead of drawing, you know, your own conclusions based on what you're visually seeing, seeing, um, you know, try to ask how they got it done. Uh, In the New England district, I'm sure you've all heard of it. We had this great, uh, team award a few years back called the white glove award and it was literally like the you know judge a book by its cover award um which as somebody that was running an event it was kind of crappy because you know i had all these flyers hanging up around my event that were like oh vote for the white glove award vote for the white glove award and i had no idea like what was going on and one of of, yeah like (laughs) what what is this thing and one of my students was like yeah you know somebody came up to us and was like you guys would never win this like your mentors touch your robot your mentors build your robot and i was like what is this crap so like that's just taking it to another another level in my opinion like just you know labeling and like putting crazy stigmas on it but um like does anybody else have any of that like craziness going on in their region because (laughs) luckily it's since dissolved but it's all the east coast dudes man cali doesn't mess with that there's a weird (laughs) like this is a there's a term that i've sort of heard floating around like i think it's died out recently but there's a term sponsor built which is where oh. it's a team it's a team that their robot is like completely laser cutted like cnc powder coated and they feel like no it was the it was a company that made that robot and Crap, like, dude, my kids would love that dude my kids would be <laughs> stoked about that They'd be like work done for free Whew. amazing yes. well that that's the thing like then there's like other teams like mine that feel like that they put their blood, sweat and tears into everything. And they did it more like trial and error type building to where mm-hmm. it was not like they didn't have the access to like CAD resources, like it solid works or all that. And they just had to like draw it pen and paper and then like cut, 
cut Lexan by cut Lexan by hand, cut metal aluminum by hand, and then like put everything together. If it didn't work, take it apart and do something else. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's always like a, a a thought that crossed my mind during build season. Like I remember as a high school student, like seeing some of the teams that got like a box of nice like cut sheet metal and stuff and would put it together. That's like I mean looking at it from more objective standpoint like that's a that's a resource problem like there are some teams that will just never have access to that but i think that there's a lot of teams that are now opening their doors like when they do have access to those resources and providing it to other people um but i mean yeah it's the idea of like sponsor built is an entirely another kind of level to this whole mentor built thing i know that like you know if uh company is going to be sponsoring a team to a certain extent like they obviously want them to be working and operating at the best level possible um i'd love to like you know hear from students that are working with like ifi and stuff so i know we had on um one of adrian emerson's students last year whose name is totally slipping my mind but shoot yeah madison so madison had a um internship with ifi and like so she got to not only like see you know ifi work with her to machine parts for a robot but you know then she went to go and work with them and kind of learn more about that process so it's cool to see the reciprocity of like okay we're gonna do this for your team but then we're also gonna bring you in and and do this for you um does anybody like i mean obviously rc you guys are pretty hooked up with uh west coast product stuff but do any of you have any other like pretty heavy connections with your sponsors and having them like do a substantial amount for you and your team besides kind of like paying for stuff to be honest, like we would, like honestly, the kids would love it, right? If Parks were better door, they'd be the most stoked out of anybody else out there. But right now, they got to make every single shaft, every single. So the school hooks up with like a decent amount of money per year. So right now, we have like a Haas mill, a five by ten router, like four or five lathes, a couple more mills, and we're getting a brand new school with like a bunch of new equipment. So right now, it's like the kids can make whatever they want whenever they want. So they're very lucky. Um, before, I think the only sponsor we have is like a laser sponsor that does some of our gear cutting for us when we need it that's about it um we're in the opposite boat we're like loaded on machining and tooling so we just kind of goof around it's a pretty good problem to have <laughs> yeah definitely yeah so for us a lot of our manufacturing so um, just in-house very rarely like we'll send something out uh to a sponsor that does it for basically material cost for us but most of our machining is in-house we have a hobby grade router um, that we use for stuff, and it's been good enough. And drill press, bandsaw, you can build a, build a pretty decent robot with that. Mm. Yeah, like yeah. my team only has like a grinder, a drill press, and I possibly and a like horizontal like saw, and mm. so and so it, it's out of a our, our head mentor's garage, so it's not a lot. And we just never had the access or like the resources to like outsource it to uh, companies or call or universities that had like their CNCs and laser cutters and all that. Hmm. Yeah, and we saw. I mean, on premiere night, we saw a team from like South Africa that was working, you know, basically out of somebody's house. So it's it's pretty crazy to see that, you know, regardless of you know if you're working out of somebody's garage or you're, you know you have access to you know, sponsors that are able to go and do all that machining for you. It's pretty crazy to see everybody kind of compete on the same field and at least get an experience out of it that they wouldn't otherwise be able to get, you know, at school. A lot of the comments that we're getting in chat that Tyler is sharing with me right now are all pretty like pro, not necessarily like mentor built, but mental, mentor support. Um, you know, on our team, our philosophy is, you know, we're trying to give our students the the best experience possible and giving them skills that they definitely wouldn't access in Boston. Boston Public Schools, I think only one of them out of all of our students has some access to like wood shop or metal classes. Like I was lucky enough in middle school, like I did shop class and it was awesome. Like I kicked ass. I went and did the spot welding so nobody else wanted to and all that stuff. But you know, dope. none of our kids like have that really at their schools except for Brookline, which is a more affluent community. So I know for us, it's like we really push, okay, like, here's this thing that you otherwise wouldn't know anything about, like how much you want to learn about it. We're going to push you as far as you can possibly go before you reach college. But um, has anybody else like kind of, I don't know, like with your, obviously like we're all from different regions of the, you know, first community, but do you think that without 
you know, this team, your students wouldn't necessarily, or this program, like your students wouldn't necessarily have had the opportunity to explore engineering through their just, you know, general education before college. I feel sure, like it definitely from, yeah, definitely from, definitely from mine because <laughs> the, they're, like I said before, my team came out of a fall of another team. And that's because there wasn't a lot of support given to sort of the STEM. Like my school, the school in particular that they were out of, like there was, like they have a great theater program, great band, and great sports, not great STEM. It's usually a triangle of the t of it. If two are really strong, the other is weak. So STEM is not really that strong for us. And there's like there's only one class that even uh, gives the option of like doing something engineering. Yeah, so um, our team comes from a pretty big school board, so it's pretty interesting. You have very uh, specific tech schools um, that'll, you know, have engineering and then hands-on sort of stuff. Our school used to be like that, but then they just changed out uh, the metal shop to a wood shop. So there's a whole bunch of wood stuff. So until our team was at the school, there's 1,500 kids that couldn't cut a piece of two-by-one stock. So... <laughs> Narcy, I know I've heard um, some pretty cool stuff about what you're working on with your your team's school. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, yeah, yeah. So because of our team, like, we've convinced the school to get more of the STEM classes, yeah. But um, we got um, a new middle school building built. It's, like, $50 million in just STEM stuff. And then the new high school is, like, $150 million that's full of just, like, STEM stuff, new sports stuff. And then I think our shop's worth, like, $20 million of just new stuff. So, like, the money's available. What I've learned through teaching for two years is the money is available. It's just that we always ask the wrong questions, right? Like, so some of the stuff, like, like California has a ton of STEM money, a ton of CTE money. And so we've been accessing a lot of it. So we're getting all this cool stuff. But it's just a lot of, it's a lot of grind, right? Like, you got to go out there every day and, like, figure out who has the money and how do you get it. So, and then a lot of problem is like a lot of teams, like they don't go and reach out for all these resources. Like they don't put the work in and they, and then on the back end, they complain like, I'm never going to get this. I'm never going to get that. Like we started out of a classroom over the last decade that I've been involved in the team. We've gotten new stuff every year. So it is definitely a grind. It is definitely work, but the school is pretty supportive and we got a bunch of new stuff coming. So in the next two years, we might be like not as good because we're moving in, but it should be pretty cool when we're settled. That's pretty amazing. I know that's like one thing I've pushed with the neutrons is like, let's look for grants and, you know, just go yeah. for it. If you can, I mean, especially in, in first in general, like there's so many different statistics that you can just pull off the first website about like how many students is it impacting? Like what's the, you know, demographic that it reaches and that's the type of stuff that will just rake in like money or sponsorship or support that otherwise teams wouldn't have. So, right. so before wrapping up this topic, um, we're actually going to start looking at some of our giveaways. So um, real quick, um, if you have any other questions or comments that you want to have talked about on air, go ahead and tag at first updates now, and we'll be sure to get to that. But um, before we take any additional comments, we're going to um, look at our giveaways for the evening. So once again, we have the awesome digital goats t-shirt and the analog devices um, IMU module. So Check out more at analog.com forward slash first. And our keyword keyword for the giveaways tonight is update. So um, make sure you type that in the chat and update your Rio for all of your analog device products. So type an update right now and for a chance to win both the t-shirt and the IMU module. Um, we'll draw twice and don't forget you must be following the channel to win. And if you want five times the luck, click that subscribe button and help support fun. So um, we're going to hop into our next topic, which definitely is related to the first one. So managing expectations with <laughs> your team kind of based on what people in the community are saying. So um, the reason why we wanted to hop into this tonight was after, you know, so many awesome powerhouse teams came out week two and showed us what they're made of. There was some um, obvious opinions that were being thrown around about, you know, how they did or why they did that way. Uh, my students were lucky enough to over here, some trash talking in the bathroom at our first event, um, which was just ironic, like shit talking, you know, in the bathroom of all places. But um, so it just lead me, it led me to wonder, like, you know, okay, this past season in 2018, we had um, two like repeat world champs. We had 254 and Strike Force, um, which blew my mind. But in like within that, it's like how how do you like 
move into your next season after that? Like as a mentor, like how do you kind of set expectations without being too crazy um, for your team moving into a completely new year Um, and vice versa? Like, you know, how do you work with a team that may have way less resources, but is competing alongside these other top tier teams? How do you keep morale up? Um, And how do you keep your students from kind of getting sucked into that? Like, oh, we're never going to be as good as them kind of role. So um, how do you guys as mentors or as, you know, community members kind of help curb the toxic culture that we sometimes see in the FRC community from both adults and students, whether it's online or in person, but like, how do you kind of set your, your team's, I don't know, season starting off? And then how do you kind of keep the morale up regardless of if it's like going great or if it's not going so great? Yeah, so we like to look at um, other teams. So like RC brought up uh, Madtown, for example, 10 years ago versus now um, the, what do you call it, Poops 2.0? Um, so, I don't know, 2.0, more like knockoffs, you know. But <laughs> poop knockoffs. Poop knockoffs. The Chinese yeah, yeah. poops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, um, so we like to look at teams like that and be like, hey, look at where these teams started and look at where they are now. And the thing for us is you always want to try and get better. And one of the biggest things for, I feel, a lot of teams in sort of the situation we're in is you can build a pretty good robot if you don't try to do too much, right? So, yeah, we'll make trade-offs at the beginning of the year. We'll be like, hey, this is not what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do, and we're going to try and be the best at it and try and keep iterating that, getting better and better throughout the season. And, you know, every year just learning from your lessons and getting better. And I think if the students see that you're building better robots every year, um, that's a big motivator, right? Yeah, I definitely have to agree. Like my team's philosophy always at the beginning of the year is recognize, okay, we can either do a bot that can do everything, but will be average at everything or choose to sacrifice one thing in the game and, uh, then be really great at the other thing. And honestly, that has worked well for us in the past. And that is why I can, like, I'd say we are a low resource team but we are still highly competitive in the district. Uh, I guess for me, um, yeah, the, fir- the first one is the, the, the crap talking. Um, I just tell the kids like to enjoy it. If you're getting, you hate it on, just love it. And then do your best, you know, like, what else are you going to do about it? Right. You can't control it. So like, cause like my kids get it all the time and they're always like annoyed by it. I'm like, guys, like you can't let it affect you. So talking shit about you, just enjoy it. And then just, just whatever, dude, like, you know, you're doing something good. Right. And then on the back end for managing goals, I just tell them, like, uh, for me, it's an all or nothing thing. All the mentors know it on our team. We're either going to do really well or we're going to suck really well. So we're one or the other. Like, we go all in every year. Because I tell them, I go, it's a waste of my time to come in every day. And if we're not trying to level best, um, we put out clear goals at the beginning of the season. And, and our goal every year, it's, like, to win champs, right? And if we're not doing that, it, it's whatever, right? Next year, we're going to get better. And every year, we've gotten better. Um, but I think for us, it's all about doing the best we can and leaving it out on the table. Right. I don't want to go home and then the champs and be like, I didn't put hundred percent effort in. I didn't, I, you know, I didn't do what I could have done to win. So, and I tell the kids the same thing. Oh, like if you go out there, you give your, like last year, we felt really bad. We're like, damn it. We think we were pretty good. We got our butts kicked on Einstein. Did we do our best? Yes, we did. Good season. Next season. Yeah. So I think that's the mentality you got to have if you want to do well. Yeah. And So like going back on what you were saying about like, you know, your team kind of sucked before like a long time ago, how, how did you like kind of start that process of like really building the team up in the last decade to getting to where you guys are now, like swerving around the field and absolutely like stomping the competition. (laughs) That's fun right now, but um, no, we just sucked. So I started with one person, I think I was on the team and then we got my brother, we got some other students. We got valuable students. We got valuable mentors. And then slowly but surely we made friends with some good teams. Like the poofs have been really helpful citrus is fun to talk to you make friends with some of these good teams and they just kind of help you along right and then every year you work on getting better right you're and we work year round so we don't take days off right so during the off season we probably meet two to three days a week and the kids hate it right they're like why are we meeting why are we putting an effort i'm like guys like our goal is to be the best right like i would love to kick everyone's butt that's just how it is with me like i don't like losing i don't like you know not showing up not putting effort in come on it's like my like my dream goal is like like three years when i retire i can be on master chef you know so I got to work on that. But um, I, I think that for us, it was every year, every month, we set a goal and we worked on it. And if we didn't if we didn't accomplish it, we looked at each other like, why didn't we nail it? Like getting sponsors, why don't we have 50 sponsors? If it didn't happen, we set a real consequence. I think a lot of times first teams are like, I'm okay. 
I'm like, you know what? They have it. We don't. We're never going to get there. And that's how we were. We had one classroom, one table, like some 1998 Max, and that's about it to our name, you know? So it requires the effort. It requires the work. And then we just put in the grind every month, month after month. So that's what it was for us. And then it, it, it helps in our area because the poops are so damn good that you got to get better, right? Like, that's the bottom line. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, I think – oh, go ahead. I, I think for my team in general, like, we're, it's sort of a in, – in our district, it's sort of segregated in the off season, so teams aren't really that interactive. And, all, and also during the build season, a lot of teams right before competition season starts – are very are sort of secretive with their designs and how they do stuff. The only team I've seen that shared stuff in our district is twenty three sixty three, uh, but basically, I think since we don't have a poofs team in our area, we aren't that competitive. And unfortunately, my team might my, my team might stay where we are. Like we're just gonna have. But the thing is, we've been just scrapping and just uh, doing uh, exactly what we need to do to be a competitive team and survive in this district. Mm-hmm. So well, to think, go, on, okay. um, so yeah, to go on about what RC said, like they have the poofs. It's very similar here in Ontario, especially with districts. But it's been like this for a while. Like you have eleven, fourteen, twenty, fifty-six, six, ten, twelve, forty-one. Like all these good teams, and everyone just wants each other to do better. And like reaching out to those teams, you'll be surprised at how helpful they are and how much they want to help you to get better. Yeah, and I think that's like something that we've seen within the New England district as well. Like, you know back in pre-district world like you know when I was in high school it was like all the UTC teams were the powerhouse teams like you know 177 176 175 like you know everybody was was looking up to those teams and now like we've seen this massive shift um of like teams that have been around for a long time that now within the district model are really thriving and growing and hitting their stride because people are starting to you know, do more on the off season. Uh, we have a stupid amount of off season events in New England, like almost too many to the point where people are spending money to run their off seasons rather than making money off of them. But it's at least opening up this door for students and like mentors to to have more opportunities to like extend their season and get their kids more motivated and you know try weird new things to kind of push their their own skills and. You know, as much as there is definitely, like, you know, trash talking of, like, oh, that team is, like, you know, too good to have students be building it or whatever, like, people are starting to see the inner workings of how things go on within, you know, our own district and our own teams. Um, You know, 195, for example, has this awesome warehouse where they have, like, a full full practice field, and they, you know, allow so many teams to come in, and, like, they had a rookie team kind of working inside their shop this year, which to me is like crazy. Like, you know, you have this elite team bringing in a brand new team that didn't have, you know, a space to work or resources or whatever and worked right alongside them. Like that's the type of kind of camaraderie you definitely need to get these rookie teams that are stepping into like a crazy competitive, you know, era of first um, to like not just run out the door and wondering what the hell they got themselves into. But um, I don't know, I think, I've definitely seen a huge shift in like teams just kind of pushing themselves within our own district and, you know, to do better, do more. Like we have more teams that are, you know, competing at regional events outside of our district than there were before. But to what RC was saying before, like the neutrons were kind of the same way. Like if you look at, I don't know, like 2000 and I don't know, 2006 or 2005, like, there was like glitter on the robot in 2005, I think. And now it's like, all right, like we're powder coating. Like, you know, the kids are really like grinding in and, you know, doing some crazy stuff with the robot. But like 2005, there was glitter on the robot. Like we've come a long way in the last like decade and a half. And that didn't happen just by like, you know, a few mentors, you know, building a robot. So, um, so we have some great comments and questions from the chat on this topic. So OMG robots too. Um, wanted to know so it said first for somebody now we have quote improve every year mentality trying to build simple fast robots that work well um we've come a long way since stronghold with that mentality so you know i think that's a great thing that we're starting to see within districts i know i'm sure it's kind of tough in the regional model rc you were saying like you know there's like the poos there's citrus like it's got to be pretty intimidating every year to especially like to be a new team to step into that um let's see what else we have here so Tevia, Tevia, yep, double zero said, we have a strict rule for mentors. You should be asking, quote, what can I help with? 
or help you with if a student asks that question to a mentor, you have done something wrong. Do you guys ever find yourselves um, as mentors kind of in that boat where students are wandering around asking like, what can I help with? And how do you feel about that, I guess? We have that all the time. Like yeah. it happens, yeah, because kids like, you know, they don't know, right? Like, so when you get younger and newer and older kids, the older kids just want to work on the bot, right? And the younger kids are like, what do I do here? So we have that problem all the time. And a lot of the time the mentors just like take one of the kids and work on the haws or work on the mill or do something, right? And, but that's like a common problem that I assume a lot of teams have. Uh, yeah, so yeah, so for our team, like uh, for a little while, it was just like a small group of five, six students working on the robot. But this year we got a lot more students. And honestly, it's I, I really like it. Like when the kids are coming up and being like, hey, what can I do? Like it's they're invested. They want to be working on yeah. something, right? Shows and interest, right? Exactly. Right. So it's like, hey, uh, we have these parts that can be machined. Um, oh, I don't know how to machine this here. Let's do this together. Right. And then right. there's five more parts like this. You can use those techniques to go ahead and do that. So um, I think it's like a really good learning opportunity if the students are coming up. And like, I loved it this year. Like they're always up at me or some of the other mentors. Hey, what can I be doing right now? Uh, I think my team is a little too small for stuff like that to happen. Like <laughs> Our first year, we had 11 students. Last year, we had 13. And this year, it's 17, I think, right now. So, and it's just that, no, like, everybody who's there, and also add on the fact that it's a community-based team, everybody who's there is knows what they're there for and knows what they want to do. So it's not necessarily a bunch of students saying, oh, cool, a robotics club. Like, like I want to join this. Now what do I do when, now that I'm here? It's more... Like a lot of the kids on our team are, oh hey, I'm really in, I'm really interested in learning about this. Oh hey, this is uh this is expl this is close to what I want to do, so I'm gonna go do that. Yeah, I think um like that number that you have of students is like the perfect <laughs> number for never having a student have to say like what can I be doing. Um, but there is definitely that like tricky scenario where it's like okay you have this new group of students they don't necessarily like have the intuition to like just keep pushing and pushing and pushing without you know having to ask okay what do we do next or what else can I do and we all, like I think any team hits that point in the season where too many hands like on the robot isn't necessarily like being helpful um you know back to the whole Gordon Ramsay thing like too many chefs in the kitchen yeah. isn't necessarily the way to do it but um so in a moment we are going to start our giveaway um let's see so if you haven't already please type update in the chat to be eligible to win and if you want five times the chance make sure you are subscribing so um nick are you doing our drawing for our giveaways tonight awesome so tyler is going in and getting those winners so right now type in update if you want a last minute chance to win these so we're giving away the 829 digital goats t-shirt that looks pretty awesome to have a rocket ship on it this year. Yep. It's a goat and a rocket ship. It's pretty dope. All right. And we have the winner for that. It is fun FTC Nathan. So go ahead and throw all those rigged emojis. Into <laughs> or emojis, whatever. I think FTC Nathan is obviously one of our subscribers. So way to go, Nathan. Um, enjoyed that awesome t-shirt. I'm kind of jealous. I want to go in a rocket ship t-shirt all right and our second giveaway for tonight is that awesome uh, analog devices i am you module and our winner for that will be posted in a moment and the winner is connor master 1018 so congratulations to them and enjoy that make sure that you um contact tyler with your uh, mailing information how you can get or how we can get all of those awesome giveaways to you. Remember when we mail things to you, we need your first name, last name, your actual mailing address, the number that you live at, along with the street, the uh, you know, city, state, province, whatever else we need to send it to. Some people forget that. Um, so add those rigged emotes in chat. Um, we clearly rig all the giveaways for those two winners, but yeah. So if you have any other questions real quick before we wrap things up before top 25, go ahead and throw them into chat. But so, before we wrap things up, where are you guys competing next? Or, you know, what is the next step for you now that we're entering week three of competition season, which is pretty crazy? Uh, for so, me, it's Sacramento. Uh, week four. Nice. So we're competing. 
we're competing next week at the Ryerson District event. Awesome. Uh, my team is competing this weekend at uh, the Portsmouth event. So Nice. And uh, Neutrons will be up in beautiful Utica, New York this coming weekend with a lot of other teams from all over the place, like Nemesis, uh, 195, Shaker, and I'm excited to see that crazy Stipole Suction Cup in person. I'm excited to see if it's as crazy as it was on the reveal video. Um, so do you guys have any other like exciting updates about your team or anything you want to plug real quick before we wrap things up for tonight? Yeah, uh, for my team in particular, like, we had they, they had designed a pneumatic piston system for the climb, but unfortunately, like that, when they got to their first event, it wasn't that good. So mm -hmm. they they decided for their out of bag time, or at least they would have a new wreck and pinion design climber at the ready, and they would put it on. And I recently got a video this or this afternoon that showed a uh, functional climber. That's always exciting because <laughs> I know that we're we're hoping for that this weekend. Um, so hey, what about you guys? Anything uh, new and exciting before you head to Ryerson? Yeah, I just, I just want to give a big shout out to my kids. Um, things didn't quite work out how we wanted them to at Durham, and you know uh, they know that sometimes things aren't exactly in your control, and they're super excited to compete. So we shout out to them for actually just taking it on the chin and moving on. So it should be a good showing at Ryerson. Awesome. And RC, what about you guys? Anything exciting happening with uh, Madtown before Sacramento or anything pretty epic with uh, West Coast products? Nah, they were just losing weight because we're too fat right now. <laughs> the and then, uh, yeah, hopefully go win. You know, the kids know we want, we want to go out there and win. That's about it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, nothing else. Oh, yeah, and the robot name this year is uh, 3203++ for everybody wondering. So that's nice. about it. And who comes up with the name for the robot every year? Is it the kids? Yeah, I don't know. We, we just we just bullshit around, and, but something, you know. Yeah, so that's so. the way to do it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so thanks to everybody for joining us tonight. It was pretty awesome to have so many different people on Roast and Robots tonight. Um, thank you for everyone who's helping make this show possible, um, especially to our awesome guests who came on tonight, RC, Soyhabe, and Griffin. So thanks for joining us. And fun fans, uh, we rely on you to keep fun going. So please consider subscribing or donating bits pledging your support um, on our Patreon. And the most important thing that you can do is let others know about fun and shows like Roast and Robots and click the follow button. So we also have a Discord where you can join 13, uh, 1,300 other people and talk after the show. And don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and the occasional Snapchat takeover under First Updates Now. So on behalf of myself and our producer, Nick, I would like to thank you guys for tuning in tonight and to all of our moderators in chat. And if you're watching, stay tuned for the frc top 25 that will be coming on right after this show at nine o'clock eastern time so we'll see you next time on roasting robots and talk to you then see you later guys bye bye
Everything is new to me Sleepless in a distant dream Slowing up the speed of time Don't let me crash down tonight I just wanna feel what I feel, what I feel When it's just you and me I'm falling on my knees, on my knees just to see If I can still Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.